eBay has changed and added in some major site preferences that you need to be aware of right this minute. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to look at some site changes, some site preferences that eBay has made. Now, eBay has added in across the board, it looks like, because I've been getting contacted by lots of people about buyers who want to place an offer being forced to place a charge card information in the system prior to even being able to place the offer. If you accept it, it immediately pays for that item. So there's no way on earth for a buyer to combine any of the items if they're purchasing it that way. Now, a lot of these folks have actually started to contact eBay about these issues because the buyers were getting mad. The buyers wanted multiple items. The buyers couldn't combine and they were automatically forced to pay for it. Now, a lot of the folks who I've talked to also contacted eBay's help desk and most of them were told that there's no way to turn that off or to do anything with it. That is not correct, though. There was a setting in eBay where you can turn that feature off. There are also a lot of other site changes and site preferences that you should be aware of. There are some other features that you want to turn off and deactivate many different things so people can't track you and all sorts of different things like that. We're going to hop over straight away and show you first how to turn that feature off where your buyers aren't going to be inconvenienced by being forced to pay for multiple items from you with no way to combine them. So I'm actually in my store here. This is from the hub and I'm actually in my account settings page to get to it. Just go above where it says eBay on any page where you see your name. You click that little arrow down there and it allows you to click for site preferences immediately. Now, if you want to turn off that extra step that forces the buyer to put information in before they can even place an offer. Again, that's a turn off to most buyers that I've talked to. More buyers are complaining about that than anything at this point. You need to go to selling preferences. Now, when you click on selling preferences, this is the page that comes up. Now, contrary to what you might think, the way to actually turn this off is through blocked buyers list. So if you click on blocked buyers list, the edit button right here, we'll open it up in a different window. That is where you turn off a payment option. Again, this is a payment option, but it's under blocked buyers list. And you got to go all the way down to the very bottom. Buyer payment requirements. Require buyer to provide a payment method before they make an offer. Now this is automatically already checked for everybody. It's not turned off. You have to go in and turn this feature off. If you don't turn it off, you're going to be forcing every buyer who wants to place an offer on your items to punch in a bunch of information before they can even send you an offer. So keep that in mind. That's another step in the way between you and that buyer. A large percentage of our sales are multi-item sales, meaning a buyer bought two, three, four, five, ten, twenty items. And in these cases, if they're placing an offer, every one of those would be billed individually, one at a time, and automatically collected payment if you don't unclick this button here. Now, I know for some people, that's a godsend. They want that feature, but for most of the antique and collectible sellers, it's a no-go for you, in my opinion, based on how many multiple items I sell to the same person. Keep this in mind as well. If someone's placing, say, six offers, that means eBay is going to collect six different processing fees of 30 cents for every one of those, and there's no way around it because of how eBay has forced it. So you have to turn this off if you don't want that happening to your actual buyers. Now, another option here in the blocked buyer section, buyer requirements, they've got don't allow blocked buyers to contact me. Well, I kept getting contacts from people that were blocked. And it turns out they've added another setting down here. Apply above settings to active and future listings. So if you don't click this down here, future listings won't have that option. So if somebody is sending you a notice and harassing you or bidding screwy or sending nasty messages, if you don't click this, even if you block them, they can still contact you. Why they'd want to add another step in, it should be done deal. Once you click the don't allow block buyers to contact me, there shouldn't be any other way for them to contact you but again you have to click this secondary button as well to go across your entire store as well as to cover all new listings you have to make sure you submit it as well down here at the bottom 
They've also added in one more section, only set this requirement to block buyers with a feedback score of, and you can select how much feedback they have. It's only from zero to five. So this is one of those settings that I would honestly recommend looking at most everything in here. Another good one is block buyers whose primary shipping address is in a location I do not ship to. Even if you've made some exemptions where you won't ship to somebody, I've still had people be able to purchase items from me and send them overseas. There is an added on fee if you're sending internationally, so keep that in mind as well. So this here, block buyers whose primary shipping address is in a location I don't ship to, is something else that I would recommend clicking on if you're having issues with stuff like that. Now another one from selling preferences is return preferences. You may have this return option already automatically on for you. Approve a return automatically. Now I don't have that activated. I don't use that. That way I can see pretty much everyone comes in. Another one here, RMA, return authorization number. I always check that as well. That way, if someone is putting a return and it's a secondary backup where I'll at least know it's happening without eBay being able to just automatically do something for you. Now, sometimes eBay will automatically accept some returns if, say, it's an item not as described because you are required to accept those returns no matter what. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. Even if you state that I do not accept returns, if a buyer states that it was not as described, you have to accept the return regardless of anything in your listings or any policies you have set. Now, another one is communications with buyers. This is another topic that I would recommend you visiting. eBay has added in phone number options where a buyer can see your phone number. If you don't come back in here and change the settings in here, the buyers can see it and it's shared with them. So what your buyers can do. If you click edit, you can change this across the board. And under this option here, you can share answers to your frequently asked questions. You can set those up so that anytime someone has a question, they can just look at the FAQ and they won't have to email you. I've put some of the most important ones in here so I'm not getting constant questions on the most basic and simple stuff. You can add other questions in here. You can add all sorts of different topics in here, but I would honestly recommend doing that as well. Now, I use business policies for everything. Now, one thing I've noticed in here is eBay is creating copies of my business policies and altering my business policies. They've even created a free shipping option in my business policies. None of that is stuff that I created. Now, I've tried to remove many of these. You can see all the ones that say copy are ones somehow eBay has created. Why? I don't know. Now, I've already deleted and gotten rid of three or four of these. In some cases, I had two different copies of the exact same shipping option. Now, you can't edit any of these if the item is on sale or there's pending offers, so keep that in mind. Once my sales have ended, though, I can come and combine them back together and get rid of all of the ones that eBay keeps constantly creating. Now, to move the items that are in these newly created ones, again, that can't be on sale, there can't be any pending offers or anything, you click on the edit button and then slide down to change policy for these settings. It'll give you those settings up. You'll be able to change it to one of your other policies already done. And then you can get rid of the ones that eBay constantly keeps creating. We clear these up probably every month or so. There's new ones that eBay created for us. No idea why eBay keeps doing this, but it's a constant ordeal with these sorts of things. Now, under Manage Shipping Settings, another one that you may or may not want is always ask buyers for phone number. You can ask them for a phone number. You can force them to put one in before they can actually place an order with you. Now, I don't do that. I don't really care if I have their phone number or not. You're not supposed to call them unless it's directly related to the item in question and no other reason whatsoever. I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to have any information that I need to. I don't need someone's phone number. I have email addresses and such forth like that. Now, one more one that I would honestly recommend is clicking on the advertisement preferences. And what pops up is this right here. Control the information eBay uses to show you ads. Now, I don't care about any ads. I turned off all of the information on here. Everything is set to no. I don't care about them showing me ads. I don't care. I don't want the companies who are showing ads to be able to use my information to benefit themselves either. So all of these features I have turned off. 
everything. So no one will give me personalized ads. No one's going to be able to track what I'm purchasing, what I'm looking at, or whether the ads are successful or not. I've turned it all off. That's just my personal opinion. Do it as you wish, but that is how I am doing this. I would honestly recommend everybody going to their account settings page and just flipping through all of the different options on here and see what is out there. There's a lot of features that many people are, are not aware of. I have found that even, say, the help desk is unaware of some of these options on the platform that they are supposed to be dealing with as well, especially, for example, the turning off the requirement for a buyer to include their charge card information before they even place an offer. Personally, the offer one to me is a huge, huge deal. It creates a wall in front of them like a paywall. Most people turn away the minute a paywall comes in. That doesn't mean that the buyer isn't going to pay for the item. They may just want to keep shopping, which happens to us every single day of the week. So I would honestly go through here. I would honestly check out everything that you can on these preferences. The options are there to do a lot of things. Many people are unaware or don't even check into this area at all. These are major things that you should honestly and sincerely be aware of. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Charges, receipts, invoices, statements, taxes, budgets, paperwork, pollution. There's just no getting around it. Okay then, get through it. Now from Sharp, maker of the world's most complete line of electronic calculators, the LC8. World's smallest electronic calculator by Sharp. Price tag to match works anywhere on battery or plug-in. LC8. Small, fast, silent. Ends paperwork pollution. LC8. World's smallest electronic calculator by Sharp. Price tag to match. 345. Complete. See it.